Hello, everybody, and welcome to Jacob In Between, where we dig deep into the butt cracks of fashion and we find out the stuff that they don't want us to talk about. And <laughs> what they don't want us to talk about today is Chanel and the new CEO. Oh, actually, executive is appointed. And it's a lady, and her name is Lena Nair or Lena Nair. Sorry if I butchered your name, sweetie darling. But listen to this. The French luxury group, as reported by almost every news outlet out there. But let's just give some love to the Irish Times. We love Ireland and we love the Irish Times. So here you go. The Irish Times reports French luxury group Chanel named on Tuesday Unilever executive. Now, Unilever, let me give you a little bit of tidbit of information. Unilever does perfumes, amongst other things. And Unilever, for a certain period of time, was also producing um, Calvin Klein fragrances before Coty took over. Just to give you like a kind of a sort of an idea of who does what. So Unilever used to make Obsession, but now Coty does it. So Unilever executive Lena Nair, and I wonder, let's pull a little Carrie, Carrie Brown. And just like that, I couldn't help but wonder. Did Chanel headhunt her or how did she get that? I mean, because Chanel, you don't apply for a CEO position at Chanel. No, Chanel has to come a knocking at your door and be like, hey, girl, want to join us? Want to join the cult? So I think that's how it went down. But we don't know if they headhunted her or if she knew somebody who was working there and they're really good friends. And they, maybe Lena is really good friends with Virginie. Not that Virginie is really up there, but, you know. You never know. But the, here's the interesting thing, because um, Chanel said, OK, so Unilever executive Lena Nair is going to be Chanel's new global chief executive based in London. Now, despite Brexit, Chanel still bases its biggest operations in London and not in France. I wonder if that has to do with taxes, maybe. Interesting. But the group Ch uh, uh, Chanel said in a statement that the French billionaire, Alain Wertheimer, the Wertheimer billionaire who owns Chanel, with his brother Gerard Wertheimer, would move to the role of global executive chairman. So the Wertheimers are actually declassifying themselves. They're lowering themselves. They're like stepping down from the top, top T, from their own company. They decided to step it down and let Lena Nair take over. Isn't that fascinating? I wonder if they're, maybe they're just getting tired and interesting, right? Miss Nair's career at the global consumer goods company, Unilever, spanned 30 years, most recently as the chief of human resources and a member of Unilever's executive committee. So she was on the executive committee, but she was human resources. We're getting a person from human resources and they're going to sit on top as executive of Chanel. Weird choices. I mean, this is weird. Unless I'm thinking maybe Chanel is going to purchase Unilever. Maybe Chanel wants to buy Unilever. Maybe this is a maybe they want to merge somehow. I don't know. It's just such a weird move. But the people... My uh, informants tell me that um, Miss Lena Nade is amazing. I've only heard really good things about her. Actually, excellent things about her. People uh, at her old job are saying they don't want to let her go. Like, they love her that much. They don't want to see her go. So I'm hearing only wonderful things about her. Just, just to let you guys know. Um, Chanel, known for its tweed suits, quilted handbags, and number five perfume, said that Miss Nair would join the group in January of 2022, adding that the new appointments would ensure its long-term success as a private company, Reuters reports. Now, this is the news, basically. So what I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking, because... I understand that the Vatheim at a certain point wants to step down from that top tier position, which de facto he was, I think he was there more like a, a presence rather than an actual executive, like really big ass decision making because he had the people he trusts, Bruno Pavlovsky, one of them, but she going to be on top of Bruno now. Bruno ain't the top tier no more. Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. 
Does the advent calendar have something to do with it, I wonder? And the entire Chanel Number no. 5 factory shenanigan that you did this year. Oh, what a travesty. So there's that. But then I'm thinking, remember all of these breaking news that I've been sharing with you, like in the past month or two? They have been coming in on a regular basis. And Chanel appoints new PR executive. Chanel appoints a new director this, new director that. Like we've had at least three or four uh, new Chanel appointments. Like they are, you guys... We've been talking about the Chanel price increases. Uh, we've been speculating about the reasons why they're increasing increasing their prices so crazily. There's a lot of different theories out there. But you see, on top of those price increases, what else is happening? They are doing these crazy new major, major shifts internally. So this tells us something. This tells us that is this is... An entire restructuring of the brand, you guys. This goes beyond just the mere, oh my God, now they just want to sell to rich people. No, th th there's more going on here. It's much deeper than that. And I would love to hear your uh, thoughts, your ideas, your conspiracy theories in the comment section down below. Uh, let me read a couple of your comments. Um, Tommy says, Bruno, declassified the advent calendar, says hi. <laughs> Debbie says, Chanel is a, a cleaning house. I mean, they're definitely restructuring a lot, you guys, because really important positions within the house are being changed, like are being uh, key people that used to play in high positions at Chanel are leaving and new ones are coming in to fill those slots. That's big change. That's big change. Big change. Um, Jane says, getting ready for sale. Well, Chanel does have a sale twice a year. They don't reduce their bags, though. But they do have a sale twice a year. And, uh, yeah, th their sale is uh, January. Depending which part of the world you are in the States, their sale begins begins a little bit sooner. Uh, but then they have the, the, the pre-sale for the VIPs, right? And then they got the main sale also coming up. But uh, in the rest of the world, it's usually pre-sale for customers that spend a lot of money. Uh, pre-sale is maybe like before Christmas and then like uh, the rest of us mere mortals get to shop whatever is left over uh, on sale. We get to scavenge like rodents. Um, we get to scavenge whatever's left over uh, right around after New Year's Eve, like the 5th, 5th or 10th of, of January, depending which country you're in. Fortini says financial arrangements slash agreements lie behind. Yes, but to be that fruit fly on that wall where those decisions are being made in that office, ah, oh, what I would give. You know what I mean? Alina says, I think it's not as strange as it sounds. Unilever has a lot of brands that have had to shift their brand marketing, especially since eco-minimalism became a trend. Interesting. So you think she left because they had no more space for her? And that's why she went to Chanel. But Chanel has to want you first. Tyler says, I'm here for phasing out the 70-year-old white men and allowing people of color, women, uh, to have leadership roles. She seems like a great, unique choice, and I'm excited to see what she does. Here, here. I agree with you, Tyler. And that's why I was also saying... I was pointing out very clearly before, I've only heard wonderful things about her, people who actually worked with her that say that she is great and they're so sad to see her go. Having said that, Lena darling, Lena darling, give a girl a call once you're sitting up there. I can be of help. Just saying. Here I am like Trisha Paytas writing to uh, the Wendy Williams show. Like, oh, Wendy's, Wendy's sick. Uh, I'm ready to take over. <laughs> Got. Now, we're not going to do it as ghetto style as Trisha, but in case there is a position opening, I'm here, darling. You know you could profit off of me working for you. You know it, girl. Just saying. Do it. Do it, Lena. Do it. Okay. Do it now. Do it yesterday. <laughs> oh, Debbie. Tier 2 member since 11 months. You got your monthly extra super chat. Deco for Chanel. Make it happen. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Debs. Yeah, Jack. Exactly. Lena would be wise to hire me. Duh. I mean, just saying. Yeah, do it. Do it. I would love Deco in a high power position. As Chanel says, Tyler. Oh, Tyler. And the second I would be there, you would be on my speed dial list to call and be like, girl, 
get your ass over here. We got to work together. Let me tell you. I, oh, the team I would put together. The team I would put together. The things that we would do. Oh, my gosh. We can always dream. Can we do more than dream? I wonder. And just like that. Nicole Popinchuk has become a member. Oh, for six months, it's a renewal of Tier 2 membership. Daco for president. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. And I couldn't help but wonder, is it more than just a dream? And just like that, this video ends and the new one begins. Follow me on my Chanel journey. Instagram profile, Coco Chanel is in my house, where you get to see photos I take of Chanel things of my collection, my fantasies. Follow me also on Super Jacob uh, on Instagram. Uh, and also, why don't you thumb up this video while you're at it and subscribe to this channel. Can't get a subscriber in like three days. What's going on, you guys? <laughs> subscribe. Show a girl some love. And um, never forget to never give up on love. See you soon. Take care. Bye.